Hello, we are here again, Pat, and we are alive. We are still alive here, and we are live. Live, yes, we're live. So we are ready to go for the rest of this afternoon, yes. this morning at 9 o'clock. Oh, it's been fabulous. You and I it's started talking about this day, and we I yes. made some things that I thought the Lord was going to do, and he's done exceedingly abundantly yes. more than we're able, able to ask or think. So fabulous. we are here, it's and I, you have not called yet. You are missing out. And yes. so if you're just tuning in, we are celebrating here at WATC National Prayer Day, National right. Day of Prayer. That's right. And so all over America today, mm -hmm. they are meeting in churches and courthouses and, and uh, in the today. town squares That's and in right. the whatever, the courthouses, right. I hope, and uh, praying, praying, praying that the Lord would turn his face to America, mm -hmm. to the world. And forgive us of our sins. We need to start off with our Lord's Prayer. And Amen. every one of you that, if you have a, a copy I'll there in front of you, we're going to all say it together right now. We just want to okay. start this, this program Amen. off uh, with him, giving him the honor and the glory. The Lord's okay. Prayer is taken from Matthew, the sixth chapter. Our Father, Father which, which art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. That is the model prayer, Pat, that the Lord gave us in the Word of God. And we stand on His Word today. Look here at all the all prayer. prayer These are not all of them. I've, I have not gathered up in the last little while, but we have had so many prayer requests. I believe we'll have a record of, we've been here Just, 21 years. Yes. And I remember the first prayer request that oh, we yes. wrote down. Sure. Every one of them have been prayed for and not a one of them has ever been destroyed. No. Mm -hmm. They are still in our room and we still pray over them. And so God hears and answers prayer. And I'm just thankful that we have this day to give back to the Lord. And uh, so the number that you see on your screen right now is 770-300-9828. And then if you have friends in the United States somewhere, if you could just call them and tell them, the number they can call free is 1-800-810-5950. And also they can email us at prayer at watc.tv or they can watch us at www.watc.tv and that's on the internet and a lot of people out there have the internet even seniors have the internet yes so they can watch us that way we may not know what we're doing sometime but we're there our presence is there we try whether or not i put it on the right place or whatever <laughs> That's right. We are there. That's right. But uh, also, uh, we're Facebook Live and yes. YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's you know, true. I mean, we're moving on up. That's true. We're moving on up. And we, an app. We've got an app. We, we have an app. We, I have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can watch us. That's and, for sure. And uh, uh, Rebecca back here, Keener, she yes. may mention that she was on her way down here and she was watching she was us watching since it. 9 o'clock this morning hey, Rebecca. on the TV. Hey. And in then the on the way in the car, she yes. was watching Facebook Live. That's so she right. hadn't I'm missed a thing. I'm listening to it. You were listening <laughs> to it. You weren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you, want to get a ticket. Good for you. <laughs> right, <laughs> that distracting no. driving law is coming That's around. Right. Isn't it? <laughs> okay, well, we're so glad that you have joined yes. us. we just we just having a great time in the Lord. And, right. and Pat, we want them to look for tonight. Right, before I leave you, I want everybody to watch our program tonight, which is called Seniors Today. No, it's Atlanta Live tonight. Oh, tonight. But you know what? It's hard to not say seniors. I know. When we're, when we're standing together, we look like the seniors today. <laughs> and tomorrow. And the next day. I know. We can't help it. Jesus said it I'm the same yes, today, yesterday, and forever. I know. That's I think right. we're forever a senior now. But anyway, it's an special edition of Atlanta Live tonight, which Betty and I will be hosting that tonight along with some special guests that we have and it's going to be like a Atlanta Life program mm -hmm. but it's a special program it is and we will have Mark Merzer who is the uh, he's a writer speaker but of the Common Thread Ministries but he's also the area uh, leader of the National 
prayer day. Mm -hmm. And so, Georgia, he's in, on the team. Mm -hmm. and he's, and he he's knows everything leader. about it. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be he's going to give us an update on what's happened in the whole state of Georgia today sure, I'm with sure. all the reports coming in, the statistics. Well, and, and then the state coordinator is going to be here at 3. Oh, goodness. So, so we're going to get a little bit of head start on it now. We are. We? That's right. Oh, I can't but, wait to hear that. And then we have uh, Dr. Jerry and little Jan Goff. And they're going to be with us tonight, which is going to be fabulous because right. we always love to hear them come well, and they're share just with like us. Family, they're our they are. Our family. And I understand that Jan has a wonderful testimony oh, about her daughter tonight, good. which she's going to talk to us about. Good. And then we have Reverend Fred Hartley, and he is the lead pastor of the Liburn Alliance Church right here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Actually, just right down the street. Right. And he is going to be with us and sharing what uh, God is doing with his church, which is a fabulous international church mm -hmm. and they're doing a lot with missions mm -hmm. a lot with missions right. and then for our music tonight we have Karen Peck Gooch and of course everybody out yes. there in Southern Gospel Music knows Karen Peck Gooch and she has actually she has a great testimony too about her healing of her husband and also uh, she'll be singing a lot of songs about prayer and which is great which is wonderful you won't believe who's on the phone I don't know who is this on the phone? Okay, well, let us know. Pastor Maria Mendova from Bulgaria. Oh, how on the wonderful. Phone. Oh, my God, isn't this wonderful? That and is she's great. on, I'm sure, by her, and it didn't cost her anything. We are so glad. I've already given in your prayer request uh, the last time we were on, so uh, I'm standing right here now. Are you watching us live? That's great. Oh, they're watching us live in Bulgaria. Oh, yay! How about Good that? Good to see you. Good to see you. They that are praying for us. They're praying for us. Oh, right now. that's great. That is wonderful. Yes, pray for America. Yes. Thank goodness. All the prayer partners and the Christian okay. people. Well, okay. Uh, Right, our president well, and thank, everybody in control. Well, thank her so much for calling us. Thank you so us. much, Maria. And uh, just keep watching. We're fixing to have Pastor Jerry Grillo is yes, going to come now. On. So come we got to move on over and let him come. Come on, Jerry. It's good you, to have you. you don't thank have to you move so over. much. You can stay right here with me. <laughs> it's good to have Wonderful. you here. Oh, I'm glad to it's be here. Good I'm to so see honored you. to be here for good the National Day of Prayer. We're it's excited. Good. You got us excited a while ago, and now oh, it's I two o'clock already. It's ready. It's ready to go. It's I'm ready, ready to, to roll. Go. We're so ready to hear. We're ready to hear. We're anxious to hear what you're going to say. This well, I want to talk just for a few minutes. I won't be long to you, but I'm excited to team up with these prayer partners that are behind me, and together. One of us can send a thousand, but two of us in agreement can put 10,000 to flight. When we come in agreement right here and now over whatever issue, whatever need, but we're coming to pray for this nation and for your nation, whatever country you're watching from, because the kingdom of God is not limited to geography. The kingdom works everywhere. And my king shows up everywhere and his name is Jesus now I want to tell you what I was feeling impressed to say to you just for a few moments before we get into prayer but in Matthew 14 Jesus tells his disciples he just fed the 5,000 he says get in the boat and meet me in Bethsaida and the Bible said when they got halfway to their destination in Bethsaida means meet me on the other side of fruit so it's fruitfulness the Bible said halfway there the storm came. The problem came. The waves were crashing. And they were in the right place, in the right vehicle. They were heading the right way. And it didn't stop the crisis and it didn't stop the storm. And the Bible said that they had to keep the boat afloat. But on the fourth watch, on the fourth watch, the Bible said Jesus was walking across that storm to meet them in Bethsaida. They, God didn't see them in the boat. He didn't see them through the storm, but he heard them. You know what he heard? He heard their voice. He heard their prayer. We have to learn that prayer is a powerful jurisdiction on the earth to reach the ear of God in the midst of my storm. And what I cannot let happen is the storm robbed me of my praise and the storm robbed me of my prayer where all I talk about is my problem and I can't talk about my deliverer. The fourth watch is the last watch of the night. 
Some of you are in the fourth watch right now, and I come here all the way to Atlanta to tell you this, uh, that Jesus is about to stop right in the middle of your storm, and we're about to pray. And we're about to stop this storm that's in your life uh, and the storms that's, that are attacking this country and this division and this anger and this racial spirit and this poverty and lack uh, and children and the millennials and all this stuff we're hearing that's negative. God's about to put a positive into your negative. Do you believe that? That's, that? It doesn't matter what I say here. What do you believe? What do you believe? Do you believe that we can right now put aside our denominational tags? Could you put aside your partisan persuasion and could you come over here onto the kingdom of God's side right now at this time in this national day of prayer and could you touch the ear of God to turn this storm and have it redirect us to our future. Boy I feel the anointing on me right now. Betty I feel the anointing on me right now. This thing is not going to stay on you. You're going to survive it. We're going to overcome it. Every scheme, every strategy, every plan, every plot that hell has set up against you and I is about to be aborted. Not tomorrow, but right now in the name of Jesus. And there's a number on your screen. I believe it's on your screen. This number right here, 770-300-9828 or 1-800-810-5950. If you'd call that number right now and get to the prayer partner behind me, we're about to pray and we're about to shake this storm and shake this enemy and we're about to loose your children and get them out of drugs and we're about to loose your home and get it out of poverty. We're about to put the jurisdiction of the kingdom back in your home, in your business. There's entrepreneurs watching me right now. Entrepreneur, your business is not going under. You're not going to file bankruptcy. God's going to bring you over because what you praise, you raise. What you praise, you raise. I'm not praising poverty. I'm praising God. I'm not praising pain. I'm praising the healer. I'm not praising my... Listen, that phone number is a lifeline to a connection to the anointing that's in this studio right now. And I'm not talking about a tomorrow faith. I'm not talking about next year faith. I'm talking about a right now anointing that's going to shift this thing in your favor right now. I want to hear these phones ring right now. Ready, set, go to that phone and say, hey, I'm in a storm. I'm in a crisis. I'm in this national day of prayer, and I'm ready to agree with somebody to unlock the kingdom of God. Is that you? Am I talking to you? Have you felt like giving up? Have you felt like killing yourself? Have you felt like there's no future? Have you, are you like me going through a child problem where your children are running the world of, of the enemy and birthing children faster than you can pay for them? I have three grandbabies, two different baby daddies. I hate that word, baby daddy. I was sitting at the table one day, and my, my, my daughter said, baby daddy, and I slammed the, uh, the, the fork in my plate, and I said, oh, that ain't no daddy. A daddy raises his kids. A daddy takes care of it. See, that's the storm that I'm facing. But you know what God said to me? Your seed shall be mighty on the earth. That's what God said to me. So I'm not believing the storm. I'm hanging on in the fourth watch. I'm not believing what the devil's saying about my son. I'm believing what God said about my son. I'm not believing what the devil said about my body. I'm believing what God said about my body. But it don't matter what I believe. I got to know what do you believe. You call right now. We're going to pray for you. Maybe you're lost. Maybe you just accidentally turned on the TV and you want to know who this guy's talking with his flashy shirt on. I'm telling you right now, this don't hang up and don't turn off the TV. Listen to me. This is a divine moment. For God to reach into your place and pull you out of what hell thought he's going to kill you in. And I'm excited about being here live. Is this live? Are we filming this live right now? Listen, you're in a divine moment. I drove four and a half hours to get here to tell you one thing. This thing that the enemy has scheduled is not coming to fruition in your life. I drove, I got up at 530 this morning to tell somebody watching in whatever country you're watching me from. That whatever God did for me, he can do for you. I'm a recovered dyslexic. I was molested as a child. I went through pains and hurt and divorce in Bible school. And here I've written 36 books, traveled the world, come up out of poverty, came up out of bankruptcy. If God can bless this Alabama dyslexic, wounded boy who's now a man, God can do something great for you. You just got to believe it. You just got to believe it. Father, I'm praying right now. Before I even finish talking, I feel the anointing. 
to pray for somebody watching right now. Stretch your hand towards whatever you're watching me from. Maybe it's a computer screen. Maybe you're watching from your phone. You could be watching at your home. If you stretch your hand and get in agreement to this right now, we're going to all come in agreement. Father, we eradicate every demonic spirit. God, we come against ignorance in this country right now. God, regardless of our partisan persuasion, your word said in Romans 13 that once someone is in leadership, we must lift them up and pray for them. We pray for our president. We pray for Donald Trump right now, God. God, we're not asking for his failure because his failure does not help Americans. We're asking for wisdom. We're asking for faith. Father, save this man. Heal his heart. Calm his anger. In the name of Yahshua. Father, heal the American heart. Those that are feeling betrayed and wounded. Those that are feeling the injustice hand on them. God, I pray for my black brother and sister right now. God, I pray that they don't see the injustice, but they see the justice of your king who rose from the dead. We do not have to stay where we are. We can be delivered from every hand of the fowler. In the name of Yahshua. Father, someone's watching suffering cancer right now. The doctor has given up on them. They haven't given up on you, God. But the doctors and the medicine is not working. But on this national day of prayer, I believe the healer is in the house right now. Cancer dry up in the name of Jesus. Be healed of that tumor in your body right now. Lord, someone's watching with blood problems and blood pressure and blood disease. God, I know of a woman in the Bible that had an issue of blood. And spent all she had on physicians. Didn't get better. But the Bible said she got worse. Until she shifted her focus. <laughs> and the Bible said she, she shifted her talk. And she started talking about her Savior. And she said to herself, if I could just get to Jesus, I can forever be made whole. God, there's someone watching me right now that's like this woman with the issue of blood. And she, they've spent all they've had. But you know what? They're about to touch the hem of your holy garments. And you're about to heal them whole. Make them whole. In the name of Jesus. They just need to reach out right now and touch. I remember the old song, Reach Out and Touch the Lord. They just need to reach out and touch them. I remember a song my mother used to sing to me. Touching Jesus. That's all that matters. Touching Jesus. If you touch him right now, he's reaching to you. Would you reach to him? There's someone watching. You're not saved. You've walked away from God. You've walked away from your Lord. You haven't known him. Some of you haven't even known him. Some of you walked away. You've backslidden. You know what God's calling you? He's calling you home right now. On this National Day of Prayer, 2018, this is the year God brought you back. This is the year he restored you and recovered you. I got a prophetic word for somebody. I just heard it from the Holy Ghost. You're going to overcome the enemy and you're going to recover all he has stolen from your life. And God's going to restore what you thought was unrestorable. He's going to put back a marriage you thought could never be healed. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the spirit of God reaching to your heart right now. Some of you have com contemplated giving up on life. You thought you're useless. But you can't know the amazing grace until you know how amazing you are. Amen. To him, you are amazing. Yes. I was praying one day. I know identity issues very well. Now, somebody listen to me for a moment. I know what it feels like to feel like you don't measure up. I know what it feels like to look at others' success and say, what's wrong with me? I know what it feels like to go through a divorce in Bible school and all my Christian friends and preachers quit talking to me. I know what it feels like to be all alone in a house at 20-something years old, afraid and suicidal. But I also know what God did in my lonely moments. He showed me how amazing I really was to him. And God said this to me. When I saw what it was going to cost me 
to pay for you. And I decided to send the best I had. It was the proof of your value to him. He gave the best he had. His best. He didn't try to negotiate and cheapen the price. He paid the most expensive price he had for you. You know why? That's how valuable you are to him. And when he told me that, all of the hurt of my insecurities began to roll off my mind. I realized something. That every time the devil was telling me how useless I was, it was the proof of how useful I'd be. Because he's the father of all eyes. <laughs> so when he tells you you don't measure up, you're really measuring up. When he says you can't be healed, you're really going to be healed. When he tells you you can't be delivered, you're really going to get delivered. When he says you're going to stay broke, you ain't going to stay broke. Because anything the devil tells you, he is the father of all eyes. And it, the opposite is going to happen. Matter of fact, if he told you you didn't get saved, you really got saved. Because he's the father of all eyes. Would you believe that today? Would you do me a wonderful favor? Would you do me a favor? Would you quit listening to the voice of your failure? Amen. And would you start listening to the voice of your Savior? Yes. He's calling yes. you right now. Yes. Would you cry out for this country? If you're watching from other countries, Malaysia, Bulgaria, would you get an agreement that God would raise America back up into her place of revival? Would you ask the Holy Spirit to move through our churches and burn out the trendy uh, spirit of cutting God down to one hour and let the fire burn again where we're laying on our faces crying, is there mercy for me? Is there mercy for me? Would you pray that? Would you ask God to be God again in our churches, in our pulpits, and take the CEO out of our pulpit and put the man of God back behind the sacred desk where we're not working a church formula, but we're working God's faith on your behalf. Oh, Father, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost right now all over the country, God. Y'all pray with me right now. We got to go. Y'all pray with me. God, I release right now the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let a revival hit our churches. Let it burn like a fire. Let it burn out all this religion. Let it burn out all this uh, formula that we're going to reduce you down to one hour. We can't get what we need from you in one hour. We need to tarry. Father, even you said, could you not tarry one hour? Could you not at least go past the hour? God, I come against the Spirit that is formulating your presence into a church growth pattern and not a kingdom expansion culture. Father, I'd rather offend the crowd than offend the cloud. Would your cloud come back to America? Oh God, raise your banner. Let the lion of the tribe of Judah's signia start being lifted in every church and every denomination and every culture. And God, racism will die. Poverty will die. Lack will die. Addictions will die. Sickness will die. And every scheme and strategy and plan and every plot of the enemy shall be aborted and will not come to fruition in the name of of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let me pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, I pray in that language that's above every language. I pray in that language that comes only from your name, only from your kingdom. What my mind cannot say in my natural language, whether it's Spanish or English, I can say it in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, heal that mother's heart. Heal that father's heart, God. Heal the businesses, God. God, release the mantle of the kingdom of God. God, let the entrepreneurs in your kingdom experience incredible, uncommon favor. Oh, healing, 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 healing. We worship you, God. We lift your name, God. God, it's only you and only you can we. Only by you. God, 
Paul said, in you I live, in you I move, in you I have my being. Oh, hallelujah. God, would you release an Acts 4 anointing right now? God, would you release an Acts 4 anointing? That we will not love our possessions as our own, but each one of us giving according to how you've stationed us on the earth. That you would give us mega grace. Great grace was given unto that church in Acts chapter 4. Mega favor. I want to say this in this last 30 seconds. If you will love God more than your business, if you will love God's interest more than your home, if you will love God more than trying to build your church, uh, and you would make him your obsession and not success, uh, he's going to release an Acts 4 anointing on you right now and give you a thousand times more favor. A thousand times more grace than any other generation. And he's not doing it tomorrow. He's doing it right now. Woo, Betty, I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. You are here for such a time as this. Oh, hallelujah. And we are always glad to pull you out of North Carolina. Get down real in the south, you know. I know, we Get really down here in the south in Atlanta. Oh, I'm in it. So that you can bless the people here. I'm and I, I know many are watching and they're, and, they're, and they're crying and they're hurting and they're fearful. But listen, God's in control of what's going on in our future. I don't believe in man's plan. I believe in God's plan. And Jeremiah, I told the other day, I said, you need to dial 911. They said, what's that? I said, Psalm 91 and 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then I, then I told somebody, I said, then you need to know God's phone number. They said, what is God's phone number? I said, Jeremiah 33 and 3. Call on the name of the Lord. And he will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Oh, hallelujah. Which you do not know. Which you don't know. They're his things. They're his plan. And then Jeremiah 29 11. Oh, yeah. I know the thoughts I have for you. I know the plans. And so whatever the devil has scheduled... Mm -hmm. God's rescheduled it right now. There you go. In the name of Jesus. We believe it, brother. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? That's, that's the main the key. thing. Do you believe it? That's the key. Do you that's believe key. it? that's the key. Yeah. Use these Take phones. Take hold of they it. Should, and this is an email. They can. You can email us at prayer at watc.tv. Or, listen, the quickest way to get to us right now is to pick up your cell phone uh -huh. or your home phone mm -hmm. and dial these numbers that you see on the screen, 770 mm -hmm. 300 I guess that's a local number yeah, it is. A 9828 but uh -huh. if you're if you're in another country or you're watching in another city or another state you mm -hmm. use that 1800 number mm -hmm. and you dial 1800 810 5950 and you hook up with us cuz we're going to hook up with you and guess what your life's going to change the minute you do. I promise you That's that. right. Amen, That's Betty. Right. Thank <laughs> Betty, you I'll leave so with you. Much. I love you guys. Oh, love Lord. We've been getting so many phone calls here. Uh, we got Carolyn here uh, who is asking us to remember her in prayer. Mark needs a prayer for issues in his life. And uh, Candice is wanting us to pray for her. It's an unspoken request for Patsy. Uh, pray for Barbara and Virginia for physical healing. We're praying over every one of you that call. Every one of you, you're being prayed over. Pray for friends to be saved. Pray for Doris for needs in her life and for her family. Pray for wisdom for a man who has a decision to be made. Trust in the Lord. Put God in this situation. Don't make a decision till you hear from God. And Sandra, bring more friends into her life and make sure they're the right kind. Don't just don't just get friends anywhere. You get you pray and ask God to send you the friends because friends have an effect on your life. Don't forget amen, that. Amen. Pray for Jackie. Uh, she has recently passed her. Uh, her mother has passed away, and you're in sorrow. But let me tell you what: God is always there. You're never. You're never alone. All right, we have got a wonderful, wonderful host who comes on Atlanta live right now. We got Regina Howard in the house, and let's give her a good welcome right now, honey. Come on down. Come on around. Come on around. God bless Amen. you. We're so glad to have you. God bless and you. And we believe that the Lord has got a word coming from your mouth. That's Amen. what the Lord's wanting you to say today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God, God bless, bless you. you. God, bless God bless you. I don't think it's ever a hard time for me to talk about prayer because I believe in prayer. I believe that if we have connection and relationship with the Father, that we know that he's going to move on our behalf. 
And so right now we are here today to encourage you to and let you know that there's nothing too hard for God. Everything that you stand in need of, God is ready and willing yes. to hear you and to answer you. But my question to you today is, how much do you believe that God will hear you and answer you? How dedicated and determined are you to stay in the presence and in the face of God, trusting him to move on your behalf? Something that I want to share with you, 1 John 5, 14 says, um, it, it is this, this is the confidence, excuse me, we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God hears us and there's nothing that we that we can uh, can do to cause him to not want to move for us. But if we're praying his will, if we're praying and asking God how to show us to move forth in his ministry, if we're praying and trusting God for his healing, when his word lets us know that he came to heal us, if we're praying and searching his word and trusting him to deliver us, to set us free, to bring salvation, it's free. We've just got to trust him for it. So you have the opportunity today on this day dedicated to prayer to call into our line. Our prayer partners are waiting. Call 770-300-9828 or if you're out of the Atlanta area, call 1-800-810-5950. We are here waiting to connect our faith with yours. We are believing God today to heal bodies. Listen, God is not a respecter of person according to his word. If he's healed somebody of cancer before, don't you know that he's capable of doing it again? You've got to put your trust in him. You've got to allow your heart and his arms to be wrapped around you. You've got to be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in him and know that God is willing to do those things to bless and to change your life. Now, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. First John 5, 15. We're going to take it on down to verse 16. I'm sorry, we're going to First Chronicles, I'm sorry, 16, 11. It says, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Yeah. Now I know a lot of times what happens is when something goes on in our lives, we immediately pick up the phone. We pick up the phone to call our girlfriend. We pick up the phone to call our brother. We pick up the phone to call a sister, a mother, an aunt, a cousin. But what you need to do is drop to your knees and call Jesus. Nobody's going to give you an answer like he can give you. When you've been wronged, let's just say You've been wronged and and you know your family doesn't want anybody to do you wrong. They don't want anybody to hurt you. They don't want anybody to harm you. They don't want anybody to steal from you. So if automatically there may be a flesh reaction when you go to your family. But God doesn't want us to react in flesh. He doesn't want us to respond in flesh. He wants us to respond in spirit. So when you get on your knees and you begin to pray, God will begin to heal you. God will cause you to walk in forgiveness to that person right now that is struggling with unforgiveness. God wants you to walk in true victory today. And you can do that by walking in forgiveness. You've got to let it go. I don't care what was done. I don't care what was said, but you've got to release it all into the hands of the master and watch him work it out. If you do it the way he says it, you're always going to have victory. You may not see that that person is will reap what they sow. You may not see it, but trust and believe that God has everything worked out. God has everything under control. If you're sitting here and you're watching us today, God is Jehovah Rapha, oh, yeah. the God that healeth thee. There's nothing too hard for him. I want you to grab a hold to the horns of the altar and begin to cry out to God. Some of you have decided it's not worth me praying anymore. 
Some of you thought that, you know, I prayed and I didn't see God answer and it looks like everybody else has been blessed all around me. Don't you dare give up. Not on our watch. And I believe everybody in this room agrees with me. We will not let you give up today. We will not let you surrender to the lies of the enemy because the devil is a liar. And Satan, the Lord God, rebuke you and we curse you to your face. You are defeated. Tonight, today, we are trusting God to hear your cry. We are trusting God to heal your body. I don't care what your ailment is yes. we serve a mighty God. Yes. We serve the master physician. Yes. He holds all power in his hand. Uh -huh. There is nothing that he cannot do. But uh -huh. what we need to know is what will you do? Yes. How will you trust him? How will you acknowledge him when he does it? Will you uh, yeah. praise him? That's will you cool. give him the glory? Uh -huh. Will you try to take it unto yourself? No, you yes. can't do that. You've got to let everybody no, my God is real. My yeah. God is capable. My yeah. God is able. Yeah. And so today we're going to join with you. Today we're going to trust God along with you. We're going to cry out with you. Our prayer partners are sitting here. Yeah. I don't hear yeah. this phone ringing, but we need you to call in today, right now. Yeah. To that person that is about to give up and you even have suicidal thoughts, I speak to that spirit and I cancel that in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will live and not die. I, whose report will you believe? Will you believe the lies of the enemy or will you believe the word of God? I need you to stand on his promises. I mean literally stand on them. Don't take down. Don't step back. Don't move to the left and don't move to the right but keep your eyes focused in on Jesus Christ because he is the answer he's going to answer every solution that's going on in the world today so don't you worry if you feel that you were served an injustice don't you worry God of all flesh is willing to give you the justice you deserve he's going to give you the victory that you deserve Father God in the name of Jesus we thank you right now God we magnify Magnify your name right now. God, we give you glory right now. God, we pray that you would look down upon your people right now. We pray that you would have mercy upon them, oh God. We pray that as they connect with you, God, as they give their lives over to you, oh God, as they rekindle their relationship with you, oh God, that you would hear their cry, God, that you would go down on the depths of their heart and pull those things up and out that no longer need to be there. I pray that every lie that's been whispered but in their ear will be canceled. The assignment of the devil will be canceled right now today. I declare victory. I declare healing. I declare overcoming power. I declare deliverance to the one that is addicted, oh God. No matter what they're addicted to, drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, whatever it is, God, I know that you are a bondage breaker and I declare that it will be destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. I thank Thank you as we pray for family members that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. I declare today that they would sell out to you, Lord God, that they would give their hearts over to you. They will invite you in and ask you to take full and total and complete control. I pray for our youth, God. I pray for the millennials, Lord God. I pray that our young people will be covered. I pray that they will be protected. I pray, God, that they themselves will search you out, oh God, that they will find you, oh God, and that they will surrender render their lives over to you, that they won't believe the lies of false religion, oh God. I speak against the lies of, of false prophets, oh God. I declare that our young people will know you for themselves. They won't hold on to the coattails of their mother or their father, but they'll know you for themselves, and that they'll come forth with power. They'll come forth with conviction, oh God. They'll tear the enemy's kingdom down and raise up and cry Cry loud and spare not and show your people their transgressions and they'll lift you up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I declare victory on this day today. I declare victory today. I declare victory today. I declare victory today. Have your way, mighty God. 
And we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the honor. We'll give you all the glory. We won't take it unto ourselves, God, because we can't do anything. If we could, it would have been done by now. But God, we lift our hands, we put them together, and we thank you, and we glorify you, and we magnify you because you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Thank you for hearing our cries. God, those that came before me, those that will come after me, we thank you for hearing us. And we magnify you, God, again, and we say amen, 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 and amen in Jesus' name. Again, call us here, 770-300-9828 or 1-800-810-5950 if you're not in the Atlanta area. Call us. These prayer warriors are excited about connecting their faith with yours and believing yeah. God Amen. to give you the victory. Amen. 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 God bless you. So glad to have you here with us. God bless us. you. Glad to be uh, here. Everybody's used to watching you on Atlanta Live. <laughs> yes, Some of the best people to be on. The, uh, we always hear something from the Lord. You're just an anointed every God time you're you. on. We really appreciate God bless it. You. But how God's using you. God bless you. Not just here, I'm sure everywhere. God's open <laughs> well, door to you everywhere. Well, we're believing him to continue to do that, and it's our pleasure and our honor to come and encourage our yes, viewers yes. to stay connected to the master. That's it. That's the only way we're going to make it. That's right. Is we have to stay connected and in relationship with him. That's right. In order for God to do what he needs to do in the That's earth. right. Well, Amen. you keep us in prayer now as yes, you go. Yes, Pray for us. We'll be here to 830 now. <laughs> yes, if you want to stay, you're welcome to stay. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I'll let you God go that bless way. You. Thank you All so right. much. God, God bless, bless you. you. Okay, you know, Greg handed me this, and this this is what's so neat about technology nowadays. Uh, Rita, she posted on Facebook that she is agreeing with all of the prayer warriors there. So if you want to put a, com a comment on Facebook Live there, you're welcome to do so. And I think Greg is keeping a watch on that. And uh, so we'll be glad to uh, let you know. I, I could be watching it on my phone, but I don't have time to watch it. <laughs> okay, i tell you what. It's just such a wonderful, wonderful joy and privilege for us to be here and have this opportunity that we have uh, with all these wonderful prayer partners around here. And uh, the, I need to talk to this lady right over here to the right of me. And uh, it's time for her to give a testimony. <laughs> Okay, let me let me uh, let me keep doing this while she's finishing up. Uh, here we're uh, praying for the Stewart family that has called, and Sharon has called for family salvation. Uh, Donna is uh, pray for her; she's recovering from surgery. Donna, we pray that all goes well with you. Pray for Pam and Lee's salvation. Now is the day of salvation. Don't give up on your family. Don't don't give up because you know Acts sixteen thirty one says, "Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house." You you claim your seed for God, that they shall be saved. And here's Alicia. She's having a spirit of unforgiveness. My motto is walk in love and forgiveness. If you don't do that, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. So you need to let that in unforgiveness go. And uh, we got so many more here. Um, let's see. I think that I have, have used some of these. Boy, we've got so many prayer requests coming in. I got one scripture right here while Leslie's getting ready. I love this in Psalms 34. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together, together. And this is what I like. I sought the Lord. And he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Fears. If you've got fear, it's not of the Lord. He wants you to lay it down. Come on, Leslie. Uh, they've been coming here from the Lawrenceville Church of God for how many years now? Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen years that they're she's the prayer uh, group uh, leader. Yes. And uh, she's got some folks with her here in the room. Amen. And uh, so you've been here a, a long time with us praying, and we appreciate it so much. Oh, and, Leslie, uh, I want you to just share some scriptures. You said you've got some prayer requests that people have given to you. Amen. So just, just obey the Lord right now. Amen. Good evening, uh, afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here today. 
uh, to welcome you and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because we believe and trust him for everything and I, I and I had to say trust because it's always a trust factor with me uh, about almost 12, 15 years ago, not 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And in that time, I was expected because I was standing on God's word. I was believing. I speak scriptures over myself all the time. And when I was diagnosed with that, I just said, my, my, my spirit just went down. But when I got the report, this is the scripture that came into my spirit. It says, uh, Psalms 118 and 17, I shall not die but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. And from that's what keeps me going from day to day. Uh, that fear of, of cancer, fear of anything else. No, you don't belong to me. I am here. God has me here for a purpose. And that's one of the reasons I keep coming to TV 57. Even when I get tired and I don't feel like coming, you said, Lord, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare your words. So that's what I'm doing, declaring his words. And he will keep me all the days of my life until he says it's time for me to go. First Peter 2 and 24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed that's NIV words uh, version and I have some prayer requests I, I left from work today and I was saying do you want me to pray for you at TV 57 I thought everybody was gonna say oh no don't do that but they gave me they they believe in trusting God that I come here that God will heal them I just want to let them know Psalms 118 17 first Peter 2 and 24 he has it he will take care of it. He provides for all your needs. Yes, don't does. worry. Don't trust in anything else. Mm -hmm. Trust what God says. That's, That's what I do. God. Trust his word. Yes. Irregardless of what it says, his word is true. Yes. You've got to believe it. As the two speakers previously said, you've got to believe what God says, yes. irregardless of what you see. Yes. I have from my work, uh, Miriam Ash, uh, Stacy Jurek, Stacy Kelly Taylor, Pastor Craig Stone, Stones, which is one of the teacher's husband, and uh, that has been diagnosed with cancer. And some of it has been very aggressive, but we are believing God for your healing. Judith Mays, that, that has some female issues, believe in God for, for that. And my school, Far Elementary, I'm bringing them here today. My, my um, uh, principals and the administration and, and, and uh, assistant principals, that they can stand strong in the midst of everything, that they know how to touch lives, that enhance these lives for the kingdom of God. Angela Hahn, um, Michelle Rivera, Ted Bailey, Pastor Tracy and J.R. Stone. These are people that have lost loved ones in our church and we have about six in, in the last week and a half that have passed on to glory. But praying for their strength, knowing that God will, will give them peace in the midst of their lo uh, loss of their loved ones. Yes. Uh, we have uh, another teacher's husband, Kevin O'Brien, that has serious Alzheimer's issues. Uh, uh, Jada Noble, one of our prayer partners here, a little girl, eight years old, has diabetes. Uh, we have Susan's parents in Tennessee, Ali and Johnny Garcia, uh, Linda and Jimmy Garcia, uh, Jane White, Earl Washington III, believing for their healing, their issues, providing for everything that they need. And we know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask him, even what our minds could comprehend, because God is more than enough. So whatever your needs might be, call this line, 770 Three zero zero nine eight two eight. So that these prayer partners can pray with you yeah. and, and touch God for you, because when two or more are standing together and agreeing, God is in the midst. And yes, then those is. prayers, you're not alone. If you're standing there and you're saying that I, I don't know what to do, you're looking at this this TV station. So you call these prayer partners yeah. so they can agree with you, so you can see the manifested glory of God's promises in your life. Amen. Amen. 
Yes. Also, 1-800-810-5950. It's also something else, another number that you can call in. We trust God. We know God. I'm living proof. They are living proof of who God is and what he has done. And he's no respecter of person. He's done it for me. He can do it for you. But you must believe. We do our part. God does his part. But you got a part to play too. We know God is more than enough. So call in. God bless you. We love you. We're going back now to Betty. Okay. Thank you, Lancy. Oh, I appreciate the prayer partners so very, very much. Without them, we just could not manage around here. And uh, every everyone that comes up here, I, I'm just amazed at the uh, the testimonies because I haven't heard a lot of these testimonies myself. And so I, I'm just thankful to hear all of that. But we have a very, very special person uh, coming right now. His name is David Franklin, and he's the National Day of Prayer State Coordinator. So God bless you, Thank brother. You. Thank you. I appreciate y'all letting me be here today. Oh, yes. And you have come with a bundle full of knowledge about <laughs> the National Day of Prayer. And so we're all ears because we're here celebrating, and some people may not know exactly what it's all about. But tell us all the good things that happened today. Well, listen, Betty, I don't normally dress like this. Uh, really? Matter, no, well, I just came from my, the Capitol. Oh, well, you were dressed we, according to Yeah, that. We, we just had our Capitol service. But good. I appreciate y'all letting me come. And let me tell you about the National Day of Prayer. Back in, uh, well, what, you really got to go back before there was ever a country because there was times of prayer where the people of God would call for, elected officials, leaders would call for days of prayer and fasting because of things like droughts, because of invasions of like the, the British, all kinds of things. And so our forefathers understood that they had to call for prayer. And you'll look at the history, there were prayers, just united prayers of the nation. But in 1952, uh, President Truman, who really had called one at the end of World War II to celebrate, he set aside a day of prayer and President Reagan passed it into law. And so the first Thursday in May is uh, designated as the National Day of Prayer. And that day is a pray day where America's called to pray across the land. And so in all 50 capitals, I mean every state capital, and I just came from the Capitol Service for Georgia, but all, in all communities, we had over 40,000 prayer events today where God's people were just calling out. And our theme this year, Betty, is for unity. Because it's so important, y'all, for the body of Christ to be united. And so we've been crying out for unity. At the state capitol, we prayed for unity for, oh, in generations. And we had two teenagers share. And then we had a 10-year-old and an 80-year-old pray. And we prayed that every single generation who fall in love with Jesus. We prayed for uh, the government to be united. So we had a state senator in Bruce Thompson and Senator Anderson, those two senators prayed. And uh, we prayed, lifted our hands up and said to the Senate and to the House, Lord, would you unite them with the governor and our elected officials because there's just division in the land. We prayed for unity in ethnicities. Did you know that we've got 118 languages spoken in Georgia. So, you know, some people, when you think, oh, unity and ethnicities, they just think black and white. No, I mean, we had Korean, Hispanic, we had people from across the body of Christ. And then the last thing, we prayed for unity in the body of Christ. And so we had evangelicals, Pentecostals, I mean, it was great. And then the last thing we did was we observed the Lord's Supper together as an act of unity, just to say, you know what, the new covenant the blood of Jesus Christ in his body is death on the cross. It's what binds us together. And so we, the body of Christ, we left saying, you know what? We are ambassadors for him because of a new covenant. So we're out spreading and just encouraging people to pray. So y'all, thank you for praying. See, you, you wouldn't be watching this if you weren't a person of prayer. And so God bless you and thank you for praying. Tonight at uh, 730, you can actually go to the na just nationaldayofprayer.org. And you can watch live stream. Uh, the head of National Day of Prayer is uh, Dr. Ronnie Floyd. He's in Washington, D.C. A lot of leaders from across the body of Christ are going to be there. And they're going to be praying for unity. And what better place to pray in Washington, D.C. for unity if any place needs it. And thank you for praying for our elected officials because they, they really do need it. Tonight, 730, you can just watch that live stream if you want to. But thank you for praying and thank you for caring 
enough to pray for our culture and just our moment in time. Betty, questions? I mean, I, I'm just wondering, that was just to listen a little snippet kind of thing. Well, the thing that caught my ear was when you said you had the, the uh, sacrament, the last supper. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That it's a, is a miracle. Y'all, if you want to do something fun, now we have a state capitol service every year in the National Day of Prayer. But there's all that marvel, and you ought to hear praise and worship go up, oh, and it just lifts up. I mean, it, it's I sweet. Imagine. It's sweet. And, and what we did at the capitol was drive a stake down that says, this is who we are, unapologetically, unashamedly. Mm -hmm. We are Jesus' people. Mm -hmm. On the that National Day of Prayer. That's it. But, but it's Betty, our day. Listen, you don't know this, but you're actually a part of something that's a vision. Because mm -hmm. we don't want just a day of prayer. We want a rhythm of prayer all year. So the goal is 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This rhythm of prayer that goes across Georgia. Just hear these prayers going up. Yeah, it's, this that, is good stuff right here. I'm telling you right now, we're right there where God wants us to be. And we're saying that he's opening up the window of heaven today. Because I believe there's more prayer has gone up today. I don't know. We're coming closer to the end, and we know that, to the coming of the Lord. And so we're just getting ready. We're just getting ready, and everybody is wanting to pray and touch God and get their family saved. You know, there's yeah. so much to pray about. Y'all, and you're right. She's right about praying. Let me tell you, just communities all over from Savannah. I mean, we've got us county coordinators and city coordinators and building this, this whole system of prayer. But uh, I live up in Bartow County, which is Cartersville, mm -hmm. coming out of Atlanta on 75. Yes. Now, there, they had over 1,000 people today at the National Day of Prayer Service. Wonderful. But it's been going on for a month, and we've had 10,000 people involved, what which is that? crazy. Now, yeah. here's, crazy good. You know, we've got all these school shootings and all this kind of stuff. We, we have a really unique community in the fact that God's brought the body of Christ together. Because they're in my paying job. I'm actually a district overseer for a whole group of churches, but I kind of serve all the churches. But, Betty, here's just a cool thing. We were praying, y'all, every school teacher, every lunchroom person, all of our kids, for the last month, kids, teenagers, adults have been writing prayer cards to all of our educators saying, we're praying for you. We've got the most prayed for schools in America or in Bartow County. Praise God. Well, maybe you all could start a movement, and I guess you are. <laughs> well, trying to. Wanting to. Trying to. Oh, my goodness, yes. If that can happen, see, and catch on. See, you can do that if everybody works together. That's right. You can do that, and it can be just right there. I mean, in a month's time, you can be all over America if everybody just jump on there. So let's, you talk about that. You talk about that to your school officials and, and the people around you there. That's that's what they need to do. Is there a number they need to call, or can they go to website? Well, listen, uh, just a couple of websites. There's a national website for National Day of Prayer, which is nationaldayofprayer.org. We've got one in Georgia, which is just uh, ndpgeorgia.org and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. And we're, we're doing, see, I'm still new at this thing. I've always done stuff at the local level and because of what's happening in Bartow County, God just done some unusual stuff. Yes. I got asked to be the state coordinator. Yes. But uh, starting to do little videos of prayer mm -hmm. where God answered prayers, mm -hmm. historical ones and current ones. You can't believe the history of prayer in Georgia. Oh. The stories. But there's stuff going on right now, Betty. I mean, you know it because you've got all these people. Mm -hmm. We're hearing... In Bartow County right now is the most receptive I've ever seen in my life. And I used to be a pastor, now I'm doing a district overseer. We're seeing more answered prayers right now than we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And God's people, their prayers are making a difference. Yes, yes. I mean, really making a difference. And, and your, the theme this year is the unity. Unity. And once that we get in unity, there's nothing that can stop you. Well, nothing that can stop you. Let, let me read the, the, the six things that Dr. Floyd has really challenged National Day of Prayer. Multi-ethnic, multi-church, multilingual, multi-ministry, multi-generational, and multi-denominational. That's what heaven looks like. It is, isn't it? I guarantee you. And, and all across the body of Christ is coming together to pray. But folks, I'm telling you, not just one day a week, a rhythm of prayer. Mm. A rhythm of prayer. Just continuous. Just carries on. Yeah. It just, it's, it's like domino effect. You know, it's just going to keep Listen, moving on. You know where we found the uh, who to pray for in our school system? Who to pray for? Yeah, it's the teacher. They got them all listed on the website. They even have their email addresses. So we, we emailed every teacher simultaneously this morning. At 11.50, every teacher got an email. What about that? 
But now they got they've been getting cards. I mean, little kids writing cards, teenagers writing cards. Yes. We, we challenge the teenagers up. Uh, write a card for your favorite teacher one mm. week. The next week, write a card for the teacher that gives giving you the worst grade. That's giving you the worst grade, and it will help. It will help. <laughs> But, but part and of put a piece of candy in it. Or <laughs> part of it's training the next already. generation. We've uh -huh. got to train this next year. So we were yeah. teaching these kids, pray scripture, mm -hmm. pray scripture. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, so there's just oh, all kinds of that's stuff. So good. I mean, there were prayer breakfasts. I know Cobb County there was prayer breakfasts. All kinds of stuff mm -hmm. all over the state of Georgia. Mm. So it's all good, brother. David Franklin. Listen, I'm so thank glad you, to, it's to nice meet, to meet you. you. You got a good last name, Franklin. It is a good last name, isn't it? My daddy's name was Benjamin Franklin. Was it? Yeah, he well, was a good man, you know. We go back in a crazy thing, and just to encourage you, for some of you, your family's walked with God for a long time, and that's our family. I can go back eight generations of ministers in our mm -hmm. family, but but some folks, I got a friend, it's a pastor now. He said he was going to be the first godly boat fill in the history of his family. Mm. Somebody's got to start Somebody's it. Gotta start. Somebody's got to start it. And I'm, I'm blessed to have come from a family, That's but I know right. a bunch of people that are Stop starting. Stop the curse. That's right. Stop Amen. the Chop generational it. curse. Chop Amen. it down and, and start to something new. Let it die. Amen. Let it die. That needs to happen. And that I believe someone needed to hear that right now. Amen. And they, yes. they, you know what we're talking about. And you've had to live with that. You've seen it happen way, way back. But it's time. State Senator Thompson from District 14. Guys, his mother was married six times. He grew up in a single wide trailer. He left home at age 18 just to get away from alcoholism and all that kind of stuff. Now he's a state senator and God's blessed him and credit, but he, he stopped it. He and stopped it. He stopped it and God Dead has, in his tracks. God's done something different with him. That's right. And all you have to do is believe yes. in yourself. You know, your past does not determine your future. No, it does not. You determine your future. That's right. And you got to believe that there's a God in heaven that loves you mm -hmm. and that has the power to take wherever you are and move you further, closer and to him. take you where you need to be. So, listen, well, I appreciate y'all letting me come by. Well, it's been Thank wonderful. Thank y'all. And all of y'all so that are praying, keep it up. But not just today on the National Day of Prayer. That's right. Every day, 365 days a year. There so, you go. There thank you, you go. very much. Are you going to stay with us till tonight? Listen, got I, to go. I can't stay all night. I, I, I got My wife now expects I, me eight, home. 8.30 is the latest we're going to go. 8.30. But listen, there's another guy coming in named Mark Mercer. I know. He's on our state team. Now, he's I crazy. Know. I've met him. Yeah, he's crazy. I've met him. Now, I'm saying. <laughs> You're a little bit calmer than he is, yeah. Well. But we got to have him to come. He's going to bring the statistics, I think. Only because that lady over there told me that I had to behave. That's the only oh. reason I'm behaving well, now, right you now. You know what? She can do that. She, she can put she, you in line. She had that look. That she has. She's got it. And I said, yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, She's the glue around here. You know she, what that's for, don't you? I, I do. Keep I everything do. together. <laughs> well, listen, y'all, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank I'm hang you. Around for a while. Thank okay. you. God yeah. bless you. Oh, what a wonderful, yeah. wonderful sharing of information and so many good things that are happening. Let's see. That's great, isn't it, to hear all what's happening. All right. Where is Dr. Deborah Isom in the house here? Well, good. Let's give her a big hand. Well, you are all fixed up today girl we're good to have you. you here national day of so prayer beautiful as well, always well you do too now you've got so much going on dr awesome and i just call you deborah though. that's you right just deborah to me and i just call you dr Cornette. no 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 don't. <laughs> you don't have to tag that on me <laughs> well that's who stand you right here and tell what god's been doing for you girl oh my god god is good how are you all out there doing today and i'm excited to be here on this National Day of Prayer, let me tell you something. The, the gentleman that came up before me, he said some good stuff. And I want you to understand something. God is doing miraculous things. Yeah. And you know what? Some of you are out there and you're thinking, you know, I've heard people say that in this season, in our, our political uh, season, people are just really upset and, and, and more people are having heart attacks and all of these kind of crazy things because they don't understand what's going on. But I want to tell you something. God has a plan. Yeah. God 
God is never scratching his head and saying right. what's going on. He knows right. exactly what's going on. Right. But I'm going to tell you something. We got to keep our leaders lifted in prayer. Right. We got to pray for them every day. We, yeah. I don't care if you agree with what's That's going right. on or if you disagree with That's what's going right. on. But I'm going to tell you something. Our leaders need our prayer. We need right. to keep them lifted up, glory be to God. Right. Because I'm going to tell you something. If they fail, we fail. Right. So we got to keep on praying. We got to keep on calling on the name of Jesus, I'm going to tell you what God told me. He told me, listen, he said, keep my mouth open. Keep those prayers going mm -hmm. forward. He said, because this is a season where he's breaking us out. He's taking us forward. Mm -hmm. He's beginning to pull us out of things that we thought we could never get out of. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. tell you something. Yeah. I'm talking about sickness and disease. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about yeah. poverty. Yeah. I'm talking about wherever you're finding yourself. God yeah. says, I'm breaking open those doors. Yeah. I want to give you a little testimony. Yeah. I was, I had to go to the doctor and the doctor told me this. He said, she said, I see cancer. She called me at home and she said that to me. And you know what? I closed my mouth. I didn't say a word because I'm going to tell you something. If you can't say something good, don't say anything at all. Because if the enemy can get on your negative words, I'm going to tell you what he's going to do. He's going to bring all that stuff you're afraid of to pass. But I'm going to tell you what I did. I didn't say a word. But when my husband came home, I began to tell him about what the doctor said. And my husband said, you know what? He said, that's her report. But that is not the report of the Lord. Glory be to God. The Lord, the, uh, my husband told me he said we're gonna agree in prayer and I'm gonna tell you something he didn't pray a thousand uh, scriptures he prayed one he said by Jesus' stripes you are healed glory be to God and we just stood on that thing and we didn't talk about it to anybody we didn't get on the phone and start complaining we didn't go to church and start testifying about the negative we stood on the word of God I went back to that doctor and the doctor x-rayed me and looked at me and examined me and she walked out of the room and I said well what's going on and then when she came back in I said well doctor what did you find she said I didn't find a thing I said I know you didn't because God is true to his word so I'm going to tell you something you got to begin to stand on that word I'm going to tell you something you got to pray God's word whatever's going on in your life you better find you a scripture you better begin to say it begin to talk about it begin to pray about it anytime somebody asks you how you doing you find that scripture and that's what you say and and I'm going to tell you something. God is going to open those doors for you. He's going to break you out. He's going to bring you through. And he's going to begin to let you know. Hallelujah. Listen, when God begins to let you know that he's on your side and he's going to do what his word says, I'm going to tell you something. He's not doing it for you to have bragging rights. He's doing it so you can begin to testify. Because the word of the Lord says this. He says, we overcome by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. Glory be to God. So we got to begin to do what the word says and when we begin to do that I'm telling you right now you will begin to see the light flood your life glory be to God I'm telling you I'm telling you now this is a new season for us I don't care what it looks like I don't care what it sounds like but God has already said it. he said if we stand on his word open our mouths begin to preach and pray and teach I'm gonna tell you something if you're having a situation what you have to do is begin to talk about what the word says about it and I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes it don't look like what you think it is or what you want it to be, but you're going to come out based on what's coming out of your mouth. I heard T.D. Jake say something, and it blessed me. He said when he first started preaching prosperity, he was driving around in a car that was so raggedy. He had shoot holes in his shoes. He said his car was so raggedy, his deacons were parking around the corner so nobody could see it. But I'm going to tell you something. He kept on preaching about the goodness of God. He kept on preaching about the the Lord wants to bring you out. And after a while and by and by, he began to drive those brand new vehicles. He began to dress up in those nice suits. And I'm going to tell you something. You need to know that today he is the number one preacher on the planet. Do you understand me? So what you got to do, you got to be faithful to God, faithful to his word, and do what he's called you to do. And you will see the change come. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm just standing here waiting to hear from uh, Dr. Cornette to see what she's going to talk about. Well, I tell you what, honey, you nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it because if we don't do the word and speak the word. That's when right. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, 
My goodness, he had all power to do whatever he wanted. That's right. But he only used the word when he came up against no, the three right. temptations. That's right. He said, thus saith the Lord. Glory be to God. It is written. It is written. And so it's that true. is what is wrong with a lot of us it's nowadays. True. It's true. We want, to do, we want to call somebody and then they'll say, well, you all do such and such and such. Well, okay, that's what I'll do then. Yes, yes, And then yes. we'll do what somebody else tells us. That's now, right. isn't that the craziest thing? Crazy, crazy, that's crazy, why I like, crazy, That's crazy. why I like this scripture right here. That call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not, oh, that you right. don't even know. That we don't know. And you want me to tell you something. The scripture that I love and I talk about all the time is the scripture that says, if you will come, if we come, two of us shall come oh, in yeah. agreement together. Mm -hmm. He said he'll be in the midst mm -hmm. and he said he'll do it for us. So I'm going to tell you something. You need to pick up that telephone because you see all these prayer partners back here. They want to pray with you. They want to agree mm -hmm. with his word so that you can have your opportunity to come out. So you need to pick up that phone, 770-300-9828. Somebody is here to agree in prayer with you. Okay, now, Deborah, uh, I don't know if you have a program here. I do. All you right. know I do. <laughs> I know you do. I want you to talk about it now. When is it? What's the name of it? Praise God. I want you to tune in. We have an awesome uh, program. It came on this morning, as a matter of fact. We come on Thursday mornings at 6 a.m. It's prophetic times. And you know mm -hmm. what? We go through the scriptures together so that we can begin to hear what God wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like what we're doing here, talking right. about the Lord, prayer, and all of uh -huh. those wonderful things. So I want you to tune in every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You can see an encore of that show on Monday uh, Monday mornings at 11 a.m. So tune in and you're going to be blessed because we're going to talk about the Word of God. We're going to talk about the messages that God is saying for this hour to That's bring right. you out, to take you to that new place. And I'm telling you something. I said this earlier, but it's absolutely the truth. A lot of people are so scared and frightened yeah. because they don't understand what's going on politically. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you something. God is saying he got you. David, he got, got you. this. And you don't even have the word about That's it. That's exactly That's right. The political thing's not going to get us to heaven. That's right. My Lord, he's, his word's going to take That's us out exactly of here. Right. That's exactly right. You know that scripture there in uh, Psalms, it says, uh, uh, I will... Um, now, it just, it just left me. <laughs> but it, it points us to, in my father's house are many mansions. That's right. That's right. He said, right. do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged, you know. Don't let your heart be troubled. That's Neither right. let it be afraid. That's right. For in my father's house are many mansions. And so, when you get to thinking about that, he said, don't, don't worry about anything. But then he says, look up. Look up. Because the, he's got a place for us. So that that's where we got to keep our focus. That's what we not on do. not on this news. This news down here is gonna be whatever it is. That's it. But God is in control. He's in control. And as long all. as we keep our eyes on Him. And remember, when I said this. He does not have a plan B. <laughs> that's exactly right. Remember the that. Plan A is the plan. Plan A. There's no plan B. So when He comes, we gotta be ready. That's right. You gotta be all right. Ready. It's so good to see you again. And God bless you. Too. God bless you. You just go and. Be blessed I in will. everything you do. I'm going to do Be that. Be blessed. Bye-bye. See you Bye. next time. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, my goodness. Here. All right. We have someone here now. Destiny is close by here. And uh, I understand. Destiny, come on around, honey. I understand that... Um, you have been involved in the National Day of Prayer. Yes, ma'am. And you've been to the courthouses somewhere yes, and doing something. Look at here. Yep. Well, goodness, I had a... Downtown Gaines. It's already oh, did gone. You I yours? had one of mine. Yeah. Anyway, it's gone now. But you tell us all about what's happening out there on the streets, as we might say, on National Day okay. of Prayer. Well, Welcome. Hello. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. We were downtown Gainesville today on the square with everyone praying. We lifted up our nation. We lifted up our businesses. We lifted up media, all the seven mountains. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. It was so awesome to get together with our community and bring everyone together, our government officials, our chief of police, our chief of the fire department, our chief of the, the, the chaplains, all the pastors in the area, all the local churches. It was an amazing time in the Lord. And I want you to know that God created those seven mountains, and we need to lift those seven mountains up in prayer. If you're not familiar with those, there is, let me make sure I don't miss any of them. We have religion, 
We have arts and entertainment. We have media. We have family. We have business. We have government. And we have education. So I want to encourage all of you out there that are in the arena of media, education, business, church. We need to lift up our pastors right now during this time. We need to be lifting up our government officials right now during this time. We need to be lifting up our families, praying for our children, praying against the spirit of suicide, praying against the spirit of addiction. Those are very dear to my heart. What does the word say? We are overcomers by the word of our testimony. Amen. And I want to share with you that if you're going through something right now, I feel like the Lord has been speaking to me today about teenagers. I have a teenager, a 16 year old, addictions. Um, suicide, cutting, all these things that our next generation are going through. Um, I want to just say, parents, put your phones down. Put them down. Talk to your children. Listen to your children. What's that 10 minutes of time? We had a gentleman today come and speak, uh, Mr. Sykes. I, I can't remember his first name, but he came and spoke today at the National Day of Prayer at the prayer breakfast, and he shared with us that he would pray every every morning, every morning with his children. He would pray with them every time there was a soccer game before they went out on the field. He was walking out, I wanna share this story because it was powerful and it spoke to me as a parent. He went to the game, he had a phone call come in, he said to his son, give me 10 minutes, it's an important call, gotta take it, I'll be right out there, go ahead. His son went out on the field to start playing, he was on the phone, the next thing he knew, his son had 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 been hit and had a concussion and his son said to him later on was that phone call more important than our prayer that you missed before the game that really spoke to my heart and spoke to my spirit so i want to encourage you out there to stand in the gap for your loved ones if you're dealing with addiction addiction stand in the gap pray for those Pray for those people. They don't may not have anyone to pray for them. They may not have a mentor. Make sure, folks, that you are getting people in your circle yes. that can stand in the gap, that can pray, that can intercede. Intercession is so, so important right now during this time. As I said earlier, we need to lift up our leaders. This is a time right now, as Dr. Deborah said earlier, I heard her say <laughs> that her favorite scripture is and when two or more are gathered and we stand in the gap and we, we come together in agreement, there's power in agreement. Yes. What we say, what comes out of our mouth yeah. is so critical. Yeah. We can declare and decree and demand those things. We set the atmosphere everywhere we go, everywhere we step into, we are setting that atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I want to share with you, we want to pray for those that are left behind. I heard someone say recently about the orphan. You know, just because you're not in a mega church and you don't have all these folks praying for you, stand in the gap. We have to be have a heart. What did Jesus say? He had a heart for the people. He had a heart for the orphans. Yes. We need to be lifting those folks up in prayer, people that don't have the... Uh, don't have a mentor or don't have a spiritual mother or a spiritual father. Find those people, pray with them, stand in the gap with them, help their help someone in need. If you see someone that's in need, um, we had a situation not too long ago where we had a young lady, I could tell something was going on with her and uh, she came across a little snippy and I said, what's going on with you? Oh, nothing, nothing. I knew my discernment was screaming to me that something deeper was going on with her. And folks, we're called to care for people. We are called to be kind. Kindness matters. You matter. We matter. Everyone matters. We all matter. Take that five minutes to ask someone, are you okay? So the Lord said, ask her what's going on. So I called her back in there and we sat down and I said, are you okay? What's going on with you? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. I care about you, something's going on with you. I see that something's going on. She finally opened up to me and there was some family trauma that had gone on in her family that she had just found out about. And she didn't know how to handle it. 
So I said, well, we're here for you. We're here to pray for you, whatever you need. People need to know that you care. They don't care how much you know. They want to know how much you care. So I want to lift up everyone right now in prayer. We just pray for the media. We pray for all of the television stations around the globe. There's so much darkness in this world. We're here to bring the light. We're called to share the gospel. The gospel means the good news. We're here to share the good news and to lift people up and stand, as I keep saying, stand in the gap, stand in the gap. That keeps screaming in my spirit. So I wanna just lift up our television stations. I wanna lift up um, all the international broadcast corporations. I want to lift up Israel. We need to pray for Israel. We lift up Israel. We lift up all of the government officials, all of the ambassadors. We stand in the gap and we call forth a healing in the nation. What is the Lord's desire? He wants his his nations healed. He wants people walking in freedom, walking in deliverance, walking in liberty. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Being able to share that word, sharing that good news, I'm so thankful and grateful for WATC Channel 57 because they have a heart for the people. They have a heart for the stations that are broadcast here and, and us to be able to speak boldly and declare and decree the name of Jesus, the name above every name, his name. We just decree and declare. We plead the blood of Jesus over all of you out there watching today. We thank you that the Lord is is, is pleased today that all the prayer requests and all the prayers today on the National Day of Prayer are ascending to heaven. He hears our prayer. And what does he say? Bring that, bring that petition. Bring that petition before me. I will heal your land. We thank you, Father, that you are building up the media mountain it's going to a whole nother level we thank you father that family is going to a whole nother level we thank you father that the education arena whether it's a public school or a private school father you were in those places you were there so we thank you right now and we just we plead the blood of Jesus over you. We call healing. We declare and decree healing for every family member, everyone who's battling with addiction, or if you're on the receiving end of addiction. We thank you, Father, that your hand is upon those families. Your hand is upon those households. Your hand is upon that teenager. I'm speaking to you, next generation. Yes, I'm speaking to you. And I'm saying, listen, it's time to wake up. It's time to, to, to declare and decree what you, what's bound on earth is bound in heaven. So we call forth healing, we call forth deliverance, and we call forth hope. This is a hurting world, so we call forth hope right now. If you need a prayer partner, I encourage you to call in 770-300-9828. We have prayer partners standing by ready to pray for you, ready to intercede for you, ready to stand in the gap for you. And we thank you so much for tuning in. We thank you for the prayers, and we thank you for all of us coming together in proxy to stand before our Heavenly Father and boldly declaring the blood of Jesus. Hey, hey, I'm telling you what, Destiny, mm. you hit you hit what we have not talked about today. Mm. Speaking in the lives of those teenagers and yes. those parents and everything. That was so, so real yes. and timely for us today. Yes. While we are talking and praying and for everything else going on, let's get down to the nitty gritty yes. and let's get in the home. And what you said really touched me about the dad that wasn't there for his yes. son. Oh, I mean, he'll never forget that, see? And it's just like, was it worth it? And I like what you said, put the phone down. Yep. And a lot, of, a lot of families now, when they're around the table, they put their phones, they're not allowed to have the phones at the table. Right. And when they go out to eat, they put the phones down, and yep. the first one that touches it, they don't get to eat That's or whatever, right. you That's know. Right. That's right. So, That's right. Uh, I mean, we, we have really got to, uh, to get to where we understand that we parents and we grandparents, yes. I'm a great-grandparent now. Right. And so the... the, the responsibility goes on yes. and on and on That's thank right. you so much thank you for, for what you are doing yes. thank you thank so you. much thank you. well we're going to collect uh yes. some of the the prayer reports that have come here mm -hmm. we got so many requests for prayer here let me yes. see um here is daphne yes. she needs a, a spiritual breakthrough a financial breakthrough uh and for her son to excel in school 
And then here is uh, Keisha, and she needs total and yes. complete healing yes. in the name of Jesus. We just mm -hmm. thank you for that. Lord, you're able to do it. Healing and deliverance, restoration, yes. healing. Praise God. Jennifer, you're in the yes. right place right now for you to come on over. And Jennifer Eichelberger, she has been here for a, a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> Are you going to be able to get over here? Move that out of the way so you can get here. Jennifer is one of the producers here. She's a producer at um, Monday and Wednesday. Come on over on this side, Jennifer. Right here. There you go. You produce Monday, Wednesday, and third, uh, Friday <coughs> evening, uh, the uh, uh, producer of Atlanta Live. And so uh, you've been here how many years now? Full time, about seven years. Mm -hmm. but you I, came in this prayer room. I came in this prayer room to pray, and I used to sit right over there in the corner, mm -hmm. far away from the cameras. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, you have been faithful to the Lord's work here, and uh, we appreciate you. You've written books, and you've got so many things going on in your life now and all, and we just thank God for what he's doing through you. So share with us what the Lord has given to you, because I know you're a woman of prayer, and and you believe the word of God. Don't Amen. You? I sure do. Amen. And I've been a pray I've been praying all my life. Even when I was a little girl, I used to pray to baby Jesus because that's who I could relate to. And I've just been like a, just a little prayer warrior all my life. When I was a little girl, I used to line the kids up before we would play and would line them up on the steps. And I said, and I would pray with them and I would preach to them. And I said, now you can go and play. But we had to have church first. But what the Lord has given me is that someone may be turning the station and they say, what's going on? And these people are praying. What are they praying about? Somebody may not exactly know exactly what prayer is. So prayer is simply a conversation with God. It's simply asking God to meet your need. It's simply asking or praying for someone else, which is what these intercessors are. It's praying for someone else. It's praising God. It's thanking God. It's, it's about making a commitment to him. So that's what prayer is. Your prayer doesn't have to sound like your pastors or your bishop or somebody else. Your prayer can be simple. As long as you go to God with a clean and a pure and repentant heart, he will accept your prayer. It doesn't have to be long. You could be driving down 285 and a car or truck could be coming in your direction. You may not have time to get a long prayer out. But if you call on the name of Jesus, yes. call on the name of Jesus, he will answer your prayer and he will protect you. There are so many different uh, way, prayers we could pray. We could pray the prayer of protection, which is Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I would say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In him I will put my trust. And there's more to this. And there's Psalms 121. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence come my help. My help comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. Amen. That's a prayer of protection. We need to pray a prayer of protection. Amen. We can also pray for our work day. Ask the Lord to take charge of your work day. Ask him to give you strength to get through that work day. Some of us may have stressful jobs. Some of us may have different types of jobs. But ask God to help you for that work day. Pray for your mate. Pray for your husband. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your children. Amen. When you get up in the morning, just pray. Say, Lord, cover my family in the name of Jesus. Amen. And pray for your pastor. Pray for our leaders. Our leaders need us to pray for them. Our need, leaders need us to stand in the gap and pray for them. Amen. Pray for the airways. I am the producer right here. And the airways come under a lot of attack because what the enemy has done, he has taken the airways and has twisted it. Amen. And has used it for entertainment. But that's the good thing about being at this station we can um, set aside time anytime we want to really and pray God has commanded us to pray pray and ask for wisdom prayer grows our faith 
Prayer increases our peace. Prayer helps us to discern. Prayer helps us to stay focused. Prayer helps us to be obedient. Prayer helps us to walk in unity. Prayer helps us to be strong. And in all ways, we are supposed to pray. And with that, I'm going to pray. Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. Oh God, we magnify. Oh God, we invite your holy presence into this room right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, we pray for the President of the United States, oh God. Be a shield of protection round about him. Give him wisdom, give him knowledge, give him understanding that he can lead and direct this country, oh God. Lord God, we pray for the hatred that's taking place in this country, oh God. Lord God, we ask for your angels to right now, Lord God, to infuse us, to instill love in all of us right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we pray for our pastors right now. We pray for our spiritual leaders, oh God. Oh God, we pray right now for those that are sick, oh God. Walk up and down the uh, hallways at the hospital in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray that every cell, every tissue, every organ line up according to your will and to your way, oh God. Oh God, we pray right now for those that are standing in need of finances, oh God. Lord God, your word says that I will supply all their need according to your riches and glory, oh God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Lord God, we continue to pray for our children, the protection over our children right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Be a shield of protection round about them, oh God. Oh God, we just thank you right now and we just give you praise, hallelujah. We give you honor, we give you glory, we magnify, we glorify you in the name of Jesus, oh God. And if you do not know the Lord is your personal Savior, call us right now at 770-300-9828. You may be switching the station and saying, what in the world are those people doing? Well, call us and someone here will explain to you and will lead you into the prayer of salvation in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you right now. We just praise you. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. I'll tell you what. He is worthy. And this prayer room is full every night with prayer partners yes when atlanta live is going on if you haven't mm -hmm. been watching atlanta live uh monday through friday from 7 to 8 30 mm -hmm. there's always going to be something good you know when i come in from work and the first thing i do in my kitchen is i turn my tv on because i know it's seven o'clock while i'm preparing my food or whatever mm -hmm. i know it's seven o'clock something's going to be something good on the air yes it could. that your children can watch yes always your say, grandchildren can yes watch. And you your can, great grandchildren yes, can watch it. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's going to be something good on that. Absolutely. You absolutely. know what? Uh, a lot of people's heard uh, the news all day, but they've been tuning in. Those that have been with us all mm -hmm, day, mm -hmm. they've been hearing the good news. Amen. The good news. The good news and is how Jesus. I wish we could do this every day. Yeah. I really do wish we could do this every day. I'd love to be down here <laughs> and let the and let the phones ring and let the people hear the good news. Yeah. I, the that's good what's news. gonna keep us going. That's yes. what it's does keep rare. us going. Mm -hmm. All right. Well God All bless right. you, Jennifer. Okay. All Glad right. that you were here and thank you for that word from the Lord about what prayer really is. I tell you, if you don't know what prayer is, you need to find out. And that's you right. know, you say yeah. I don't know how to pray. You don't know how. You don't have to know how to pray. That's right. That's right. Just talk to the Lord, just like you'd talk to me. Yeah, Except right. I can't do anything for you like He can. Yeah. You praying to somebody that's real. That's right. He's not somebody that's dead. No. God's not dead. No. Yeah. I hadn't said that today yet. God's not dead. Yeah. He's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. And He's got this whole thing. That's He's right. got it. He's right. got it. Rebecca, come on over here, honey. You you talked a little bit a while ago, but you didn't talk near enough. Oh, my. And so, <laughs> I think I talked too much. I just enjoy being here in this prayer oh, room it, it, and being on the phones and listening to the prayer requests. I mean, what an honor and a privilege to stand with people right. in, in agreement in prayer. I mean, right. it could, there's the highest honor as a Christian it is. to stand it by is. and stand with yes. one another in the body of Christ. And, you know, oftentimes if I have the privilege of doing Atlanta Live or hosting Atlanta Live, I always feel like this is the battery it for what is. goes on it in the is. rest of this of the station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is where the power is. That's right. And, that is exactly and right. And there's a lot of power coming out of this room that is, as Jennifer just said, 
it's just um, going into the airwaves and going over at Atlanta, the great right. city of Atlanta that we love so much. Right. And I believe one of the reasons why Atlanta has been so blessed is because of this station. I believe that And too. Greg's faithfulness behind the yes. camera, your faithfulness right. all these years, being here 20 plus years, serving the Lord, being in Jesus 22. Christ. Yes, and so what a privilege it is. It is, God. it is. It's it's wonderful to have you on board too. You're Thank just like you. family here now. Thank you. And I feel uh, that. you know our founders, Jimmy and Joanne Thompson. Yeah. That's the first thing. Even Amen. before they got in the building, wow. she called me and she said, "Betty, start praying and get everybody you know to help pray Amen. that we find the right place." Wow. And then from there, it's been prayer every day. <laughs> has been going on in this place Praise ever God. since then. Praise and that's God. what the Lord wants. He wants us Amen. to call upon him. Okay, I want you to step right into the camera here and well, just let the Lord <laughs> use you today and continue to do what we well, need to do. Well, thank you so much for the privilege. I, I really, I have uh, three young men. One is just graduated with his uh, master's degree. I've got one at a public university, U UNG in Gainesville. I've got one in public school in Gainesville. And I do feel led to pray. Uh, I, you were praying, Jennifer, Psalm 91. That was so powerful. I feel that we need to continue to pray in that vein and pray for our schools, yes. pray for yes. our government yes. buildings, right. pray for safety for Amen. our kids, Amen. you know, pray over malls oh, and yeah. over oh, movie yeah. theaters that yes. wherever we go, we're yeah. not walking in fear. We're walking in the power of the Holy Ghost because, Amen. you know, he says perfect love casts out all fear. fear. And we don't walk in fear. We walk by faith. Yeah. And so we can claim that together today over our nation. And then uh, someone else mentioned the, the mountains, the education uh -huh. mountain, the political and government mountain, the entertainment and sports, oh, media, uh -huh. uh, faith and religion, family and business, that Psalm 91 will blanket oh, yeah. the protection. Yeah. You know what? I love Psalm 91, Betty, because it says, no evil shall come nigh my yeah. dwelling. Yeah. You know, that means it won't even come oh. down your street. There you go. Oh, hallelujah. There you go. I feel That's the right. Holy Ghost on that, that yeah. we can pray, we can believe God that no evil shall come nigh our dwelling. Oh, yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So let's just believe that over all the areas in the United United States today that the protection of the Holy Spirit will be released today Amen. under the covering of the blood of Jesus. Yes. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we set our faith in agreement. We just touch and agree. We yes. touch even through this camera, the people that are sitting there watching at home or in their business or in their hotel, wherever they are, God, we agree together that we are under the covering of the blood of Jesus. We ask for a fresh covering of the blood of Jesus, a fresh bloodline of the blood of Jesus around us, around our property, around our children, around our grandchildren, around their schools, around this nation, yeah. around every government building, around this station, God. We yeah. ask for the blood of Jesus, and Hallelujah. we decree and declare no weapon, right. no weapon, right. no weapon right. formed against us shall yeah. prosper yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus. And every tongue, the word says, that rises mm -hmm. up against yes. us, you will show it to yes. be in the wrong, Lord, in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. We cancel every assignment of the enemy today yes. by the power of the blood of Jesus yes. to kill, yes. to steal, yes. to destroy, to deceive to trip up any believer in Jesus' Lord name. Jesus. We take authority over every foul, fiery dart of the enemy, the and we Jesus. ask that it be yes. turned back on him in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. We pray, Father God, for mighty angelic warring angels Amen. to come Amen. and to descend Amen. upon us, upon our cities, upon this nation, yes. upon our capital in Washington, D.C., upon our Supreme Court, Lord, to fight back the forces of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that we're under your hand, we're under your mercy, we're under your care, that we don't have to fear in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that we can, under your wings, we take our refuge, that we will not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, in Jesus' name. I thank you that we have on the full armor of God, and I pray over every single person watching today, that full armor of God on them and their families, on the head, the helmet of salvation, 
on the chest, the breastplate of righteousness, on the waist, the girdle of truth, on the feet, the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, that we are protected, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty, mighty. Everybody let's shout, mighty. To the, through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. We ask that the Holy Ghost be loosed in our nation today from border to border and shore to shore. We ask that the Holy Spirit fill every single person in our nation today from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. We ask for revival, God, to come and to restore us, Lord, to godliness and to righteousness. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you that it's done. That's, let me Amen. tell you what, Rebecca. If the Lord has ever given anybody a gift to know how to pray, you Amen. are one. Amen. I love to Amen. hear you pray. Well, yeah. thank you. I tell you what, it's just the Holy Ghost. And I it's know. from where he brought me from. from. Right. He Amen. brought me out of drugs. He brought oh. me out of partying and alcohol. Oh. And, and if it weren't for a mom and daddy mm. at home, probably watching, mm -hmm. who prayed for yeah. me. Yeah. Yes. I wouldn't Where be Where would I be? Where would we be? Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. Lord, that's yeah. only Amen. him. That's Lord. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. I didn't know all that, but now Hallelujah. that I know that, I see now why you got the praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, you know, I, I was raised differently. I never yeah. had to go through any of that stuff, you know. Praise God. But somebody told me for us, said, Betty, you can't pray like I can pray. Oh. I didn't know what she was talking about, you know, and I said, what she, she said, because God done brought me through so much. Amen. She said, you had never know what yeah. it means yeah. to yeah. what I know. Yeah. God well, we've all got a testimony. We and have. I tell my kids, yeah. if your testimony is you never touch alcohol. You never there touch you a cigarette. Yeah. You there never, you, you know, that's your testimony. That's Amen. right. That's, right. that's, that's the right. best testimony. That's the best. That's exactly right. Amen. That's the best. Praise well, thank God. you so much, Rebecca, for being Love with you. us all day, just about today. Oh, come on, Babby. Babby's, is in, Babby's house is here. Babby's in the house. Babby's in the house. Come Hello, on this way. Lord. How are you today? I am so good. You Amen. have been back there in production today. Yes. So it's it's a, a heavy day for you, but we couldn't have you in the house Amen. without being here in front of this camera. I do this with great joy. I know. Well, you just take your liberty. You're one of ours. We Amen. love you. We love you. Praise the Lord. Praise this Lord. is the day that the Lord has oh, made. Yes. And I will rejoice and yes. be glad in it. Yes. And listen, I I am just so blessed to know that we are taking a moment to celebrate this national day of prayer. And the Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And you know, I thank the Lord that we still live in a nation where we are free to worship God. Where we are free to go to the house of God, free to pray at liberty, free to play, pray in a place like this. And I'm just so grateful to be able to come to WATC TV 57 to lift up the name of Jesus that he might draw all men unto himself. And listen, I love the word of God. I love to pray the word of God. And so let's pray. I just want to pray and, and just recognize the word of God. For Father, you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And so, Father, today we approach your throne with boldness, yet with humility, thanking you, Father. And as the old folks used to pray and say in my daddy's church, but the truth still stands today that you woke us up this morning and we were clothed in our right mind. We have the activity of our limb and the blood is still running warm in our veins and we stop to say thank you. Thank you God. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you that you're sovereign and that you're in control. Thank you that we have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Thank you that he loves us and that you sent him to show us what you look like in flesh and blood. Father today there is someone who is anxious, someone who is fearful. We thank you for your word that says fear not for behold 
behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. We thank you for Jesus who brought good tidings of great joy. We thank you, Father, that we don't have to be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to let our requests be made known unto God. And the peace that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So I pray for that one who is fearful, who is anxious, who is nervous, who is afraid for the future. I pray that they will pick up the phone right now and call and allow someone to pray for them that they might understand the peace that passes all understanding that will guard their heart and their mind in Christ Jesus. And I pray a special anointing, a special blessing over WATC TV 57. Father, I pray that, that, that this station will continue to be on the forefront of broadcasting the name of Jesus into the uttermost parts of the earth. And I'm just so blessed to be a part of this great ministry. We bless you, God. We worship you, God. We recognize that you alone are God, and above you there is no other. And we bless the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And it's in his name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Sister Betty, I, I appreciate you so very, very much. And we love it when you're on the TV. Thank you for serving so well. Well, thank you, thank you. And yeah. you know what I love about you, Babby? When the first time you ever walked in this building to do Babby's house and I met you for the first time, I loved you and I thought she's such a wonderful person. But after all these years, 21 years now, yes, ma'am. you walk through the door and I see Babby Mason, you're just the same as you were 21 years ago. Amen. You never change. Well, you're always you, so kind Betty. to everyone. Amen. Everyone Everyone loves you, Amen. and you're an icon around here. Well, we I'm just appreciate. glad to be your sister. Well, I know. Glad to be I'm your sister. I'm Lord. glad that you're here. Thank you, my friend. I'm glad that Greg West found you. Amen. He he's our good friend. You. And so, God bless you all. Uh, he's done a good job in helping keep Babby's house. How many countries is your program airing? Oh my goodness! You know, Babby's house has been all over the world, and because it's global, because of the internet, right? And every time the show is on the air, it streams live, right? So that means Bab anybody who has an internet connection anywhere on the planet. That's right. Can get Babby's house. And it goes on YouTube now, you know. Yes, I have a YouTube channel and, and many episodes, most of the episodes in, in the recent days. I tell you what, let's plug your YouTube radio channel. thing. I bet a lot of people don't know you do radio. Well, I do have an internet radio station at www.babbymasonradio.com. Thank you for mentioning that. And we have 24 hours a day, we're online. Uh, you can hear beautiful music and encouraging words. And many of the guests that you'll see on my show on television are also my guests on Babby's house. Uh, on the radio. So check out Babby Mason Radio, www.babbymasonradio.com. Mm, that's a good thing. Good thing. Amen. Well, you, I know you got to go and Thank you, you got to finish love. up your Bye -bye, production today. Thank so God bless you now. God bless you. Lord. Woo. We, you all do not know how blessed you are to have had the people that have already stood here behind this pulpit today and declared to you the Word of God and have spoken from their heart. You just don't know how thankful you should be because I'm telling you, I have been touched by each and every one of those that have come before us. So please keep calling the number 770-300-9828 and out of the Atlanta area, 1-800-810-5950 and email prayer at WATC.TV. And you can go on, we're on Facebook Live right now. Go right there and look at it and uh, we're on uh, t YouTube. Go there. You can find us there, too. I don't even know where you can find us, but you get on a computer and put up WATC.TV, and you can see us all over the world, just like Babby just said. Isn't that wonderful? All right. Now, you know, we've had a lot of older people. I guess I'm the oldest you've heard from. I'm not sure about that today, but you can tell by the way I act and talk that I am old. And so I may be the oldest person here. But we have probably the youngest person that's coming right now. She's kind of a new friend for me, Jocasta Odom. And uh, she is, you've been seeing her on Atlanta Live. Look here, little sunshine. Look at you. Thank you, darling. You just outshine us all. And when I see you as a, a, a co-host or co-hosting uh, in Atlanta Live, you're always smiling and laughing, and I just love it. 
Oh, you just yeah. got so much joy, you know. I love joy. And so joy. that's what young people Amen. see. You're supposed to do that. Make us I, feel How young good. do you think I am? <laughs> well, you look like you're about a little more than a teenager. <laughs> okay. I'm 25 plus 12. 25 plus 12. That's, that's how I put it. Sounds a little bit better than 37. So I, <laughs> I like well, you do not look 37. <laughs> Thank you. You look like about 21. Oh, look at that. Miss Betty, yeah. <laughs> I just made your day. You did. Right, you get up here and talk about the Lord, honey. Oh, my God. That really, that was amazing because he made this body and he put Sheila and Jesse together and they did a great thing, I guess. So go. I'm a happy for it. But what I'm most happy about is her saying that I'm always smiling. And the reason I'm always smiling is because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is absolutely amazing. Yeah. And she said it's the sunshine, it's the SO in shine. That's what I have on on this day. That's the brightness. That's the love. That's the caring. That's the everything that he has done for me. I can tell you a lot about what he's done, but what I want to say to you is triumph for yourself. Triumph so that you can feel the spirit. Triumph so you can be convicted. Triumph so you can feel the deliverance that I feel. Triumph even knowing that the mess that you might be thinking you're in, that he'll pull you out. That he gives you choice. And even in the bad choice, he'll give you deliverance, freedom, and love. And that's what I'm standing on on this day and every day. Amen. Love is mentioned 310 times in the Bible for a great reason. Why, you might ask yourself, it's because he'll love you unconditionally. He doesn't have walls for you. He doesn't have limits for you. His unconditional doesn't say that you can't. It says that you can, that you're more than a conqueror, that you're amazing. God. God is love in you. It's in you. So all you got to do is just tap into that Jesus. You may be sitting there not saved and thinking to yourself, well, I can't. I'm not at church. I don't care if you in the tub right now looking at us on your wall. You can get saved right now where you're at because God is a great God and he'll save you in Walmart and he'll save you in your tub. I'm here to tell you that the God that I serve, that he doesn't save you at a, a time of a, on a Sunday or a time on a Wednesday or for those who have Bible study on a Tuesday. He'll save you any day because why? He made every day. He created the days in Genesis so that you don't have to be confined for a day. He helps you. He is your love. He is your way maker. He is the way out of no way. And then you may say, who is that? Well, his first name, Jesus, last name, Christ. His father is God. And I give you the advice of loving and knowing that you are his. No matter what you, I always tell people that Jocasta is a mess, but the Jesus in her is sure enough blessed. And that's what I tap into. When I do wrong and the Holy Spirit convicts me, I don't need mama and daddy to tell me to stop no more. He convicts me. When I make mistakes, am I saying that I'm perfect? No, none of us are. My name's Jocasta. It ain't Jesus. So I am constantly trying to get to him, constantly trying to touch that garment. Yeah. yeah. So what are you doing out there? What are you doing? Let's touch that garment. How do we do it? Prayer. Prayer is not something that you do on at night. Or when you wake up, thank you for waking me up, Lord. No, it's a lifestyle. I pray all day, every day. With the division that I see amongst me, I have to pray. So think about this. If we're praying constantly, we're in prayer. Am I telling you that you're going to be able to just walk this straight arrow all the time? No, but I'm telling you if you stay prayed up, that God will do a great thing in you. And so what am I going to do right now? I'm going to pray for you. I am. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you right now, God, just thanking you for this day, God. God, this moment that you are in our lives, God. God, if there is somebody out there who is not saved, God, God, I ask you to touch their hearts right now in the name of Jesus, God. If there's somebody out there struggling, God, God, they may be 25 plus 12 like me, Father God, but no date and no time and no age is too early or too late for our God. God, we thank you right now in advance, God. God, we thank you for where 
where you've taken this world right now, God, into needing you, God, into wanting you, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, there may be someone out there just struggling, God. They may be struggling at work, Father God. God, I ask you to give them strength. They may be struggling at home, God. I ask you to give them strength, Father God. It may be a student watching right now, struggling in school, God. I ask you to be there for them and give them strength, Father God. God, we know no other than you, God. You are the great Almighty. You are the great I am, God. God, for if we're with you, God, then who can be against us, God? God, you've told us that love covers multitudes of sin, God. So we want to bear ourselves to you, God. We want to bear whatever sinful nature we have right now, God. God, we want to remove it right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, we thank you. We thank you for being great, God. We thank you for being holy. We thank you for being awesome. We just thank you for being you, God. God, there is no youth that you won't use, God. No seasoned person you won't use, God. God, and we know that we can be used by you and never abused by you, Father God. And that's love, Father God. God, we love you. We lift you up. We magnify your name, God. God, I lift every person on the phone right now, God. I ask you to decrease them, but increase in them, Father God. God, give them the words to say to your people. As they answer that phone, God, give them the great word, God, to say, help them, Father God. God, suicide is prevalent right now, God. God, we want to rebuke it and send it back to the pits of hell from whence it dwell. Right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. If that's someone, I don't know why you put that in my spirit, but if that's someone right now, God, and they're dealing with that, Father God, let them know that we are here. Have them call on the phone, Father God. Let them know that they to be encouraged, God, that their village is right here, God, that we're one body, God, one body, God. There's no division in the body of Christ, God. God, when the hand is there and the arm is attached to the body, God. We all work together, God. Right now, we're all working together, God. God, you cannot remove one thing and expect greatness, and we know that, and I'm telling your people right now, God, God, that you are there. God, that you are there and you care and you love us, and we're thankful. Thank God, we're thankful for you. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, this national prayer, God, let it be a daily life, Father God. God, let it, let it be our lifestyle, God. Let it be where we live, God, in your prayer, in you, Father God. God, all these things we ask of you through your Son, our Redeemer, Christ Jesus, and the church shouted, Amen. Hallelujah, God. You're amazing, God. You're a great God. Oh, you're a magnificent God. If you are out there and you're needing a call, call. 770-300-9828. Do not hesitate. That number is for you. W-A-T-C is for you. As Miss Betty said earlier, you can reach us any kind of way. You have that phone in your hand. Make life happen. Yes. Do life with us by picking up and calling. I love you with the love of God. Amen. Can you just stay with us all the time? <laughs> we need you here 24 hours a day. Amen. It's so wonderful to be around somebody that's so young and energetic and full of life. Are you married? I am. And you have children? I have two boys, Connor and Dylan. Connor Because they always looking for me to say their name. Oh, yes. They're watching mama. Yes. Well, I am so proud that you have a family and that, and that you're connected here with us at yes, WHCC. Yes. So when I saw you the first time, I thought, where did she come from now? Rick and why? What's she doing up there? You know? I came from Greg, too. I love, <laughs> I love him so much. And he knows that I, I feel like I'm forever indebted. Yeah, I feel like it. I love him so much. He's amazing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you for being here and uh, giving us something that's so energetic and full of life today. Thank you. you just keep on being like you are. I will. Be like you I are. Will. Don't ever change. I learn from people like you. Oh, well. God bless you. I love you. Well, thank you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Oh, my. To be around young people, it does make you feel alive. And we're just so happy. Hey, Jaime, come up here, and uh, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about how we're going to um, finish up this day. And uh, number one is at uh, 4 o'clock when we close out this time. Uh, it's going to be just for a brief 30-minute break, and then we'll be back at 4.30, and we go to what time, Greg? To five, we'll go from 4:30 to five, and then we'll have six, and then we go to six o'clock, and uh, then we go to seven to 8:30.
and that's when that Pat and me will have Atlanta Live special tonight. And so everything is uh, going along real good, but the day is passing by too fast, Jaime. Too fast. Too fast. Too I think fast. We, need to, we need to continue. As you, you just said to Jocasta, 24 hours. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine that. Wouldn't that be great if we was praying 24 hours yeah. a day? It would be. It, it would be good. And you and I are in agreement here at the TV station that we need to uh, have more of the prayer uh, designated prayer times. And so I want us to think seriously about this mm -hmm. and uh, that, you know, we might could do this once a month, you know, or something like yes. that. But yes. there's never been a day, I mean, we know that. I'm older than you are. And let me tell you, I've lived my whole life and I know I, I've seen things, you know, that I never would have believed yes. could have happened in my yes. lifetime. Yes. But then when I get out the word, and I read in the book of Revelation and in Daniel and all the prophecies being fulfilled, I think, well, it's nothing that he hasn't already told right. us That's is right. going to be foretold. Yep. Nothing is being said today that hasn't already been That's said. That's right. Yeah. Reading. There's nothing new because we're reading the book, and that's our that's our guidebook, that's our map. Reading reading the word, especially Romans one, is like reading the newspaper. Mm -hmm. It is. It's so real, and it's happening, you know. And uh, yes, we are we are in the end times, and we really need to get on with our prayer life. Mm -hmm. He is there, and he will he will answer to our prayers. Yes, he will. He said so. It's in his word, mm -hmm. and we have to take it. You know, as a fulfilled promise, right? Already fulfilled promise. Mm -hmm. And the what we have to guard against is now in these last days, there are some things that are happening in the church yes. that we don't feel really comfortable with sometimes. Mm -hmm. And what we've got to remember is that we're going to stand before God for ourselves. Amen. I'm Amen. not going to stand up Amen. for anybody else. Yes. I'm going to stand up yes. for Betty Cornette. Yes. And when I know what I'm supposed to do, and I do it, and I obey God yes. and what He wants me to do. Well, then we know we're a child of God and we're following him. Yes. Jesus didn't say, go and pray in the church. So he said, go and pray in your secret chamber mm -hmm. where you will meet with the Father. Mm -hmm. Not in public like the, like the, the Pharisees did, but in your secret chamber. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to be going out here now. And don't forget now, we'll still be here in the prayer room. Remember what I told you the last time that we uh, had to break away, that even though we're, our... We're not on the screen live. We are still in the prayer room. You still call the number 770-300-9828. And we'll be right back here with you at 430. So you can go get something to eat. Come right back and don't turn that channel. See you soon.